Okay, so I'm going to start. My yoga teacher always used to say, honor the clock. So it's beautiful to see all of you guys and so many of you joining today. I'm very grateful to have you here in my space. Um, this is my, well, not my first workshop online, but my first like just inviting everyone into my, into my space on Zoom. Um, so yeah, so, so much happening at the minute. And I spent, um, quite a bit of time this morning. I've got like, <laughs> I've got all these notes that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So prepare yourself. <laughs> We're going to be busy. Okay. So let's get into all of this. So COVID's there, everything is happening and everyone is in some way, shape or form affected by this. So I'm not going to let anyone tell me they're fine. Everything's okay. Um, I'm just you know, I'm going to call bullshit on that because everyone has got something that they worried about. Everyone, this is very real for people. Um, we have people dying. We have people um, in a state of panic. We have people just really worrying about their livelihood. What's going to happen? Where am I going to go? So this is one of those moments where if you are in the spiritual realm, this is like, bam, this puts you straight into 3D. So for me, it's been quite interesting because I think there's a lot of spiritual bypassing happening at the minute, which I'm getting slightly annoyed by because everyone's going, oh, it's all going to be fine. And it is going to be fine. And things will continue as they need to continue. But there's a lot of shit going down as well. So for me, it's like we need to own the fact that stuff is happening, that there is this reality. But this is a massive lesson for all of us who are wanting to live with that higher perspective and that 5D perspective to understand that the 3D life is happening. Okay, so if you've been in Cloud Cuckoo Land and in La La Land and doing your thing, this is like, guess what? There is a reality. There's real things happening here. You as a soul have chosen to incarnate in this 3D reality um, and choose to be spiritual, but there's real stuff happening. Okay, so it's like, firstly, it's almost like you need to make peace with the fact that the shit's going down. And it is what it is. So for me, um, you know, we, we've got all like these conspiracy theories going on and there's all these type of things about look, where does it come from? Why is it there? At the end of the day, if you think about it, none of that shit happens. Like it doesn't matter because everything is happening anyway. So you thinking about conspiracy theories, you worrying about where does stuff come from, all of that type of stuff. How is that serving you? What have you got right now? You've got right here, right now where you are at this point in time. Okay, so we literally have got like absolutely no control over anything that is happening. And I think the sooner we start accepting that, the better, because it's literally, we don't know if in three weeks time, we're gonna be let out of our houses. We don't know if anything is gonna change. We have no idea about what governments are deciding, what's happening behind the scenes, how this thing's gonna pan out, is it gonna get better or not? And that's all okay. So what are you going to do? You can either go and, you know, crawl into a hole and be sad about it, or you can live for now. So the thing is, this is cyclical. These things happen. It's a cycle that's happening, but we basically have to choose to be in this moment right now and deal with what is around me, what's in front of me and what I get to deal with right now. Okay. So for me, um, it's almost like this has been a massive opportunity for resetting. We've been given time. And the one thing that if I speak to anyone in this world, what do we not ever have enough of? We don't have enough time. We don't have time to do stuff for ourselves. We don't have time to look at something that we're interested. We don't have time to spend with our families. We don't have time. And now we've literally been, been forced to step into time. Okay, to step into the now. I can't go out my house. I can't go and do stuff the whole time. I can't be places the whole time. I can only watch so much TV. I can only be on Facebook so much. I need to start spending time with me. Okay. And then through all of this, there's going to be shit that's going to be coming up. I'm going to be going into spaces of anxiety. I'm going to be going into spaces of fear. It's literally like we have this opportunity to put this massive spotlight on all of these unseen areas within ourselves where we're actually needing to start going in. Okay. We're needing to start looking at it because the more time we take right now to start analyzing ourselves, observing ourselves and our behavior, you can walk out of this 
with pieces of yourself healed to step into the new once all of this is starting to dissipate and life returns to normal. We don't even know what normal is going to be. Okay, so we are basically forced as a collective to let go of control. And you have to do your part in your life to be okay with letting go of control. Because if all of us are constantly freaking out and doing things, it's like, think about the balance. Think about like what's happening on the earth. If all of that, everyone's just in like, ah, because at the minute what's happening is everyone is reverting to like reptile brain. Okay, we're all like reverting to that fight or flight mode and our brains are like all on fire and we're like really hectic and everything because that's our standard response. When the shit hits the fan, things get hectic, I go into that reptile brain behavior. I go into that what my instinct is, what I know, my ego wants to go into protection mode, etc. And we need to be aware of this, but like how do I then manage that? So I remember a few years ago when my son, um, he was working with a therapist um, and she was really sweet and she was doing play therapy with him and stuff. And she, she helped him to basically calm down when he got like really stressed out. And obviously being a new mom, like you didn't, I didn't know what to do with the poor kids. So she really helped us. And she said to him, and she did this beautiful explanation. She said to him that our brain is like, um, if you can imagine like something that's got glitter in it. So I was actually on my desk and I found this little ball. So she said, this is what your brain's like. You see all those little pieces there and it's just going crazy. Okay. So that's like, everything is hectic in your brain and it's going, Shh. and that's what's happening with all of us at the minute. But the minute that I start meditating, all of those little pieces are busy falling down to the bottom and everything just goes, whew. Okay, so that's what we're all needing to do. We're all needing to go down a notch and go get out of glitter brain and go. Shoo. And how do we do that? We need to start breathing. We need to start getting into that space of putting oxygen into our lungs. I don't know if you guys have found, but like when I wake up in the mornings now, I feel like I can't breathe. Obviously, it's also the energy of the collective and stuff, but like my chest is tight most mornings when I get up now. And I'm like, I literally have to sit and go, oh, I have to take a breath. I have to connect with my breath because if I don't do that, my brain starts freaking out. Okay. There's not enough oxygen. So all our ability to um, think rationally, think logically, everything just goes out the wall because we go back into reptile brain. So that's when we, you know, freak out, we can't breathe. Everything gets really hectic. So we have to, for me, it's like imperative that I start my day now, especially during this time with like my morning meditation, my morning breathing. I've got my, my music going. I'll tell you guys a bit now about like this whole routine that I've created for myself. And just so that I can just calm myself down and I can get back into my breath and I can just be in that space where I can start my day with my rational mind engaged so that there's enough space in my brain and all the fears and everything can dissipate. Okay. All the glitter just comes down and then I can start my day from that perspective of freshness. Okay. So that I can literally go through the calm. And one thing that I saw, which I really absolutely loved was, um, I don't know if any of you guys follow Elizabeth Gilbert, but she has got this like five step thing that I wanted to share with you guys. So she basically, when she gets into anxiety and freaking out and all of that, she has got these five points of reference. So she basically goes, she looks for five things that she can see. So when she starts spiraling out, find five things around you that you can see, name those for yourself. Okay, find four things that you can hear. So then sit and listen. Okay, because what this does, it brings us into the moment. It stops our brains from like, and then we basically just go down. So look for four things that you can hear. Then three things that you can feel in your immediate space. So wherever you are. So I can feel the table. I can feel the chair. I can feel my clothes that I'm wearing. Two, smell two things. What can I smell? Okay. So take some time. What are you smelling? And then one, go to taste. So those are all your faculties. Those are like the five things, your five senses. And you're basically re-engaging with your five senses to stop yourself from spiraling. So I really like that little method. And I think if you 
I'm going to make some notes. That's a really good one. Just get into that space where you go five, four, three, two, one. And that puts you right back in the moment, okay? During that time, you're also going to remember to breathe, etc. So just really getting yourself into that space. So the whole big thing at the minute for me is, what do we really have control over right now? Okay, so I've got control at this point in time. I've got no control over what my government is deciding. Um, I've got no control over like what's happening outside of my space. I have control over my feelings. Um, I have control over my household. Um, I've got control over how I feel about being in isolation. So all of that stuff, like how am I reacting to it? How am I feeling about it? Um, I have control over over what I'm consuming at this point in time. So if you're on the news 24 seven at the minute, if you're on Facebook the whole time and like just taking in, start wondering about like, what is that doing to you as well? Okay, you have control over what you're doing. I have control about going outside to my backyard and you know, sitting outside this morning, I went and I sat in the sun and I literally just went sun drenched myself for 10 minutes. I drank my smoothie and I was there. Okay, I have control over stuff in my immediate environment and I have control over my family and how we're feeling. That's what I have control over. This illusion that we have control over anything outside of the now, we need to let go of, okay? I have no control over what's gonna happen. I had to laugh. I had my year planned out in terms of all my traveling and who was going to come and visit from South Africa and everything up until September. Okay. From now until September, I had everything planned out. I like had schedules for people visiting me, going traveling, whatever. This whole thing has wiped all of that out. I have like no control over any of that. And you guys know me, I'm like the biggest control freak in the universe. I love to know what's gonna happen. And for me, it's been such a mind shift. Like I'm literally sitting going, I don't know if my mom and dad's gonna come and see me this year. I don't know if I'm gonna see my brother. I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, where am I gonna go? When can I have another workshop? When do I get to do this, whatever. It's like, I have no control at all. So am I gonna freak out about it? Or am I gonna be in that space where, I can't do anything about it, so I have to be okay with it. I have to just worry about today, and that's what I need to worry about at this point in time. So that's that idea, that illusion that we have any control over anything, we need to start really thinking about that. Okay, connecting with that and seeing what do you think you have control over right now because you don't. Okay, that whole thing, it's like surrender. Okay, but. What is the benefits of you being in this space right now? What benefits are there to you being at home? What can you create? What can you start looking at? What can you do that you haven't done? How much time are you spending with your family? Are you able to, you know, be outside, work in your God and do whatever? There's so many things that we can actually shift our attention to instead of the, what do I not have? What do I have right now? So it's about changing that perspective every morning when you get up. What can I do today? What's going to be good for me today? What can I put my attention on? Okay, not like what do I not have, but what do I have right now? And we'll talk about gratitude a little bit later also, because for me, that's a big thing. What do I have right now? What have I got that really means something right now? Okay, and that's something to just start shifting that perspective a bit. Because the universe is teaching us in a big way how to let go and surrender through this thing. and. Um, and it's strangely beautiful. It's very disconcerting and like quite scary, but it is also extremely beautiful. Okay. So then what I've done, and I'm going to share this with you guys now. Um, I have created a like five step little program for myself. So I do this every single day so that I can feel better and so that I can face my day and go on with what I need to do. Okay. So. Let me pull this up and then I will share it with you guys. That's also the beauty of Zoom. And um, once we're done here, we'll do some questions and answers as well so that we can all just talk to each other a bit and connect. Okay, so let me just share my screen with you guys. The Beauty of technology. Cool. Okay. So there you go.
So my fear busting routine. First things that we're gonna do every single day. Okay, so I'm in a quiet space. For me, my quiet space is always my bedroom. Like I love being in my bedroom and things happening there. Okay, so breathing. Most important thing, when you wake up in the morning, remember to start breathing, okay? You guys know, like, I like my four count breaths, in, out, in, out, and now counting out to the, to the um, count of eight, okay? Because eight, it sort of, it starts connecting you even on a deeper level, a little bit more to the divine, a little bit more to the energies out there. So it's not just a normal deep breath, but it's almost the that breathing out just really takes you into that space of super calm. Okay, so first thing every morning, please remember to start breathing. This will set you up for the day, I promise you. As humans, even though we breathe all the time, we've completely forgotten how to breathe. So putting our focus on the breathing is really, really important. Okay, next thing I've discovered lately, and I absolutely love this, so if you've been working with me for a few years, you know how much I love the solfeggio uh, frequencies. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about those. So they basically, these frequencies, it's like a six tone scale. Um, it's used in sacred music. It was part of the like Gregorian chants, all those type of things. And these um, different scales that you get, they balance your energy. Okay. It puts everything into your mind, body, spirit into balance. Okay. And what I've done is I when I was busy writing this, I just got this thing about like, you need to use sound to calm down. Okay. And then I've been listening to this for the whole week now going, Ooh, so it really helps me because in the mornings, um, I found some free ones on YouTube. So I put a link in here. It's a five minute one, which is really nice, but there's loads of ones. There's like one hour ones. So I've been meditating and sitting with this playing in the background as I've been doing my daily rituals for myself. And it just calms you down. So the 396 is specifically um, for releasing of fear, which I absolutely loved when I discovered that because I was like, yay, so there's an actual frequency that helps us to release fear. Um, and it, it is, uh, you'll find that when you start listening, it's like these electronic frequencies and they, they're quite calming and they're just like, Doot, and it's beautiful. You just sit there and then just close your eyes and enjoy it. So make, you know, have a timer, put five minutes on, and then you just play that music. And it really is literally like everything melts away. It's absolutely beautiful. And for me, it's also... It's, it's like opening up those channels for divine communication, for you to actually just connect with your higher self, just let whatever needs to come in, try and just with your breathing, combine it with this and just really get into that space of connecting back with your physical being, okay, with yourself, breathing, 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 okay. Then the next thing that I also have been putting into my daily routine at the minute is um, gratitude. So I go through phases, like sometimes I'm like big on gratitude, especially when things go hectic. Other times I'm a bit like, okay, gratitude during the day. But for me now, as part of this, trying to get through this time, make gratitude part of your daily routine, okay? Decide on like three things that you're really grateful for every single day. Don't make it be the same stuff. Like for me, I was sitting when I was outside in the garden this morning and I was thinking about gratitude and stuff. And I'm so grateful for um, like this time now that I have. I'm grateful for sitting in the sun. I'm grateful for being able to be conscious of the fact that I need to make time. It's like a constant reminder, like make time, you have time, like create the space for yourself. So think about the stuff that you're grateful for. The fact that I, I am okay at the minute, that I'm not sick, that I don't have family members that um, is in peril or that I'm needing to worry about right now. So these little things, they all like, that's my gratitude. I have to be grateful for these things for, for right now. This is my reality and this is what I'm needing to, to look at in terms of my gratitude. So sit and think of it and every day, you know, extend your gratitude a bit further outwards from your house. Gratitude for, for me, it's like our NHS workers. And I'm sure with you guys as well, like the people in the hospitals, the people who are providing us with food, the people who are out there every single day battling and doing things. Gratitude for all of them as well. And every time you extend gratitude out of yourself for other people, imagine energetically what that is doing when you're sending that love and all of that to everyone else out there because you're so grateful for what they're doing for you. That's absolutely immense, guys. So 
we have this ability, especially as light workers, and the fact that we're so um, like in understanding of our energies and stuff, like send it out, send it out. Okay. Everyone needs that. And say thank you to the people. If you do get to go to the shop, say thank you to the person who's standing at the counter working there in the, these uncertain times. Okay. And extend love everywhere you go. Just visualize yourself busting out like, you know, these amazing high vibes so people can feel it. We have this ability. So let's do it. Okay. So now we get to the yummy and yucky stuff as well. <laughs> so if you're ready for this, join me to the dark side. Okay. Shadows, guys. Shadows are going to come up thick and fast, like kicking your ass during this time. Okay. They literally coming in for me all the time now, because what it does when we have time and we're not super busy and we, we actually have time for our minds to start thinking and we're exploring and stuff things are going to come up. Your shadows are going to come up. The shit that you haven't dealt with, it is going to come up. Your fears around death and disease and all of these hectic things in the world, it's going to come up and you're going to have to start thinking about why do I feel like I feel about this stuff? Because if I don't look at this stuff, it's going to trip me up. Okay. So for me, I've been checking myself in the last week that we've all been at home here and stuff and I'm looking at where am I getting irritated where am I fighting with people where am I like snapping and um, being sad and all those type of things so I'm going to explain to you guys how to do this and then you can all take a stab when afterwards and then let me know if you do get stuck but for me the number one question is why okay why is sort of my guiding light when I start unraveling shadow so I'm going to take an example. So I walked into my son's room and it was a mess and I just went batshit crazy. I was like, what's going on here? Da, 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 da. And I just like freaked out. And um, I started shouting at him and I'm like, dude, you need to clean up your shit, get this all. And like, I'm all riled up and he's all riled up and sad. And it's like, okay, step back. So that situation happened. I walked out of there and I'm like, okay, this is not about Ben. This is not about the fact that he, he's 11 and his room looks like a bomb hit it. And I started going, okay, so let me see what's going on here. So the minute I stepped into the room, how was I feeling? So I felt completely overwhelmed. There's just stuff everywhere on the floor. He was playing with all these little me and I can't walk. And so I'm starting to feel out of control. So I go back to the situation and I can feel, okay, what's the issue here? It's that loss of control. I'm falling apart. Like I need order. I need to feel safe. Nothing is safe at the minute. What's going on? So I keep on asking myself more questions. Like, why am I reacting like this? What's happening in here? Why do I need safety? Okay. Am I scared of the unknown? What do I not know here? Like, and I kept on breaking it down, breaking it down and asking myself more questions about like, why am I feeling like this? What does this actually mean? Where does this go? And I kept on going deeper and deeper and deeper. And it was all about like knowing myself. And it was about the fact of being disconnected, about being alone, all of that. So it basically this whole thing, me shouting at him, worked itself all the way down to my need for connectedness with humanity at the minute. Okay. And how I'm feeling so out of control and away from everyone. And I was like, oh my God, that wasn't even the, the thing. Like I was shouting at him, but deep inside, my need for connectedness and my need for safety and all of that is is not being met at the minute, okay? So when we are having these moments of outbursts, freaking out, fear taking over, we need to sit with it and start breaking it down. We call it, we chunk it down. We like literally pulling this, um, if you can think like the, the onion, start pulling it apart. Like what, what's actually going on? It's not about him being naughty or like his room being a mess. It's all about me, okay? Every time you have a fight with someone, what's inside you that needs love what's inside you that needs support okay and that's what you're needing to start looking at and you have enough time now to do that for me it's like the minute i look at the shadow and i'm actually understanding it and where's all this stuff coming up i can let it go because the minute i observe the shadow and i see 
oh my God, I just need to love that part of me. And I need to start looking at how do I connect with more people? How do I actually feel more safe? Then I can fix my problem. Okay. And I can start looking at like, what is this all about? Okay. So asking the question, like, why am I doing this? Why am I feeling like this? Why, why, why? Until I get to the root. And this is where we need to be vulnerable. Okay. Like me sharing this stuff with you guys. Like, I mean, this is like me just bearing my soul here and going, shit, you know what? I'm actually also scared. Okay. Admit to yourself that you're scared. It is okay to be scared, but you need to understand why you're scared and what is the driving force behind your fears? Because the minute you look at it, you can go, okay, I see it now for what it is. It's okay that I feel like this. I'm in acceptance of this. I can love these parts of myself more. I can actually start working with these parts of myself. Okay. So that's where the shadow work comes in. So we have to observe this. And the best way is to look at your day from the day before and see where did you lose your shit? Where did you get scared? Okay. Where these things are coming up and then start analyzing those pieces of yourself. Okay. So just keep on asking the why. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Um, allow yourself to actually see the, the parts of you that you, that you don't want to see. I mean, I don't want to see the parts of me that's feeling insecure at the minute and all of that. I'm supposed to be strong for my family. I'm supposed to be, you know, this invincible person and blah, blah. No, like you're allowed to feel like you feel. Okay. So shadow check in every single day, guys. And what I find is if I write it down, and for me, so I just start writing down bullet points. And the more I write down, the more this stuff comes out. Um, some people like to do like mind maps. Some people like to just write. Some people like to um, just write keywords, whatever. You don't have to go into a whole journaling mission, but get the stuff out of your system and just writing it down will make you feel better because it's almost like your brain can go, oh, I've done that, put it there. I'm released, okay? I've, I've given it over it's done with. And then once you've seen that, once you've observed it, it's that process of letting it go. Okay. It's there. We don't, it's not a magic instant bullet this, but this awareness and the fact that next time I'm overreacting to a situation, I can go, okay, what is it? It creates this awareness within me, which then creates acceptance and which creates this space where I can look at it and I can go, this is why I'm reacting like I'm reacting. Okay. And that humans need that. We need that like knowing that I'm not out of control. I'm, I'm like, I'm okay. I understand what's happening with me. It's all good. I'm not going crazy. I'm not being consumed by my fears. Okay. So just understand that that shadow check-in and the letting go. That for me is a crucial part of every day where I'm needing to go in. Okay. Um, and then also what I do with it is I kind of, I throw it on its head and I then go, okay, so am I really alone? Like, how am I really feeling about this? What is it showing about myself? So once I've chunked it all down and I've started like dissecting the thing down, then my logical brain comes in and it goes, well, okay, so how do you, how do you really feel about this? So like with me, like, am I really alone? No, I'm not really alone. How do I connect with the people that's closest to me? How can I now start feeling okay about this situation? So I, I basically, I break it down and then I start building it up again by introducing logical questions. Because, you know, when we, when we do things like we say, I'm stuck, are you really stuck? Like, what are you actually stuck on? Like, I'm, you know, I'm fearful. So what are you actually fear, fearful about? Like, what is this really? And then, okay, so if I'm scared of this, how can I make it better? How can I actually work with this? Okay, so we go down and then we come up again so that we can get a rational solution or an acceptance or an observation of the actual thing that we're standing against. Okay, so for me, this is like crucial for me to be able to work through um, what is actually happening in my life. Okay. So let me just quickly stop the sharing. So I'll give you guys access to the sheet and you can just download it. Um, but that's the reality. That's the, like, we have to keep on looking back into the shadows. We have to keep on going back into those parts of ourselves. And it was quite interesting for me when I was starting to think about doing this workshop on the weekend, I, I was sat and I was like in my, my room, busy making notes and meditating and everything. And then 
they, my guide showed me like the ocean and they said to me, you love to swim in the ocean. And I'm like, yes, I like to swim in the ocean. And they're like, do you know that there's sharks in the ocean? Do you know that sharks can come and like eat you up and kill you if you swim in the ocean? And I'm like, yes, I know that, but I'm still out in the ocean swimming and I love going to the beach and being in the water and stuff. And they like, they said to me, so everything in life is like the sea. There's this, it's this beautiful experience. You love being there, etc. but there are dangers out there. But when you're in the sea and you're having fun, you don't constantly think about the shark that's going to eat you, right? So if you think about life, like in life, when I walk out my front door, I can get hit by a car or I can basically, you know, I can trip and knock my head open or there's like all these dangers around us each day, but we choose to live. Okay. We choose to just go on and live. So don't let this whole situation become an excuse for you not to live. And I'm not saying you need to now go out your house and ignore all the rules and everything that's in place at the minute because they are important to stop the spread of the virus. But it doesn't mean that you don't have to, that you have to stop living, that you have to get out of life just because there's those restrictions at the minute, okay? It's a cycle. These things are going to pass. Everything's going to happen as it needs to happen. But you really need to be in that space of understanding that there's always danger out there. That's life. Life is a it's a risk to be alive, literally. Okay. So if you accept that and you know that, then you can actually enjoy it and just go, well, I'm out here. Like my attitude is very much the one of like, my soul knows when I'm going to go. Okay. So that is, so, that is, it's set in stone for me. And whatever happens between here and wherever that point in my life is, and it's unknown to me, I'm going to make the most of this process, of this little journey, of this path that I have left. If it's two days that I've left, if it's 50 years that I've left, I don't know, but I'm going to make the most of it. So every step that I take, I'm going to live my life. Every step that I'm taking on this path, I'm going to make it the best possible experience. Because at the end of the day, if you, if you go down to it on a soul level, what is it that your soul wants to do here? Your soul wants to experience 3D. Your soul wants to live this life. So live this life. That's basically what it all comes down to. Live this life. Okay. So. Um, any questions? I've rattled on for like forever now. So who's got any questions for me? And I think I can't see you all obviously in my screen. So if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question then that would be awesome. And don't be shy. I'm not gonna, I'm all keen to hear from you. Ash, you always have so much to say. <laughs> Nothing today. Hi, Landy, can I ask a question? Yes, how's it? I haven't seen you in ages. Cool, go for it. Sure, Landy. Um, from my um, side, Yes. I think for the past, like I'd say two and a half months, maybe three months or so, um, the one thing that came up for me, like the major theme that I've been dealing with is the ego mm. and the consciousness. Um, and it's really, it's not been like the nicest time. <laughs> it's, it's really showed up aspects like you were talking about the shadow selves and yeah you were talking about we have to really um love that self and not judge it mm. um, and i think when this twin this lockdown started that was the first thing that came to my mind i was like oh now it's me and ego for 21 <laughs> <laughs> yeah it really really was um that's where my anxiety came from was Okay, confronting this self mm. um, and understanding it and, unrele and unraveling it. And, you know, so you say we become through, you know, engaging with this as shadow um, side of who we are, yeah. we can go of it. And I think my question is, you know, within these 21 days, how do we, like you did talk about, you know, we become aware of it, then we accept it, then we can let go of it. But my understanding has this 
my oh let me say my experience was that if I become aware of it, you know, during like meditation or just contemplation, then maybe it will outplay itself in the real world when I'm out there, then I can pick it up, you know, while I'm experiencing it out there as a situation. Then I can be like, oh, okay, this is what happened. This is this oh, this is what I became aware of last time. So now I don't have to react this way. Mm -hmm. So my is now we chilling uh, alone for 21 days and, you know, we come up with these realizations of self, of ego. Um, we become aware of them. How, how are we going to be aware that we are actually growing and moving on from them? Um, if we, if we, I'm staying by myself, so I, I won't have any place to sort of not test myself, but sort of experience how much I've grown. Um, yes respect of that aspect so cool okay i love that so that's a very cool question so and i think you know for you it's like you're by yourself so like i've obviously i've got my my family around me and it's a it's a different vibe so for me it's like if you're gonna do the work now and you're gonna take so i would what i would do in your case because you're by yourself now i would basically go and say okay i'm gonna take my top three things that i perceived to be shadow. Okay. I'm going to work with one of them every single day. I'm going to chunk them down. I'm going to ask the questions around them, etc. I'm going to observe them and I'm going to love them. I'm also going to make a list of, of where in my life do these things come up? So where in my life do I actually um, struggle with this? So say um, like you have, let's think of an example. Um, like power struggles, for instance. Okay. So one of your shadow sides is power, for instance, and um, abuse of power and that type of stuff. Okay. So then where in my life do I get into places of abuse of power? Where do I abuse power? Where do other people abuse their power and I'm observing it, etc.? Why am I so scared of abuse of power, etc.? Okay. And then you basically start making a list and becoming aware of where in your past have you experienced these things. And then when you go out of isolation again and you go back into the real world, you've, you've almost got a, a little showcase. You've got a, like a, a to-do list where you can then see, okay, when I get back into that situation with my boss, for instance, and we're going back into power struggle, like, how am I reacting? Because I'm aware now of what I'm scared of or what I'm, you know, that fear that's within me. So now I can observe myself while I'm reacting and I can actually almost be prepared for like, how can I do this better? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I saw you smiling when I said power struggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's one of the biggest things I think that I've sort of been dealing with um, being just working in, in within a political environment. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I want you to list out those, those issues, th those things that I want you to connect with, like, what am I scared of in myself? Okay. So that power thing, for instance, like firstly, there's people abusing power there's me abusing power. There's me stepping into my power. So power is a hell of a beautiful shadow to go into. And I think a lot of us work with that and a lot of us struggle with it. So I want you to literally break down the concept of power and go, okay, cool. So where am I doing this outside of my house during my normal life when this stuff is not happening? Where's that one doing it? Where am I judging this? Where am I observing this? Okay, so you literally just... If you can think, like for you, I would imagine a big mind map of power would be like super awesome because you can literally then sit and analyze the life out of it and really understand like what, what's coming up. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So cool. Does that make sense? Is there anything else that you're unsure about? No, no. I think that was really, that was really helpful. Was okay, really cool. So kick power's ass, basically. That's your 21-day <laughs> mission. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thanks for asking a question. Okay, cool. Anyone else want to put their hand up today or some questions? Unmute yourself if you do. Ash, okay. okay. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Yeah. 
So yesterday, um, I was presented with a scenario. I went to uh, the pharmacy hmm. and I got a couple of medical supplies for my daughter, but I wore a mask. And um, just about two people in front of me, they were, there was this mother and daughter. And they, for some reason, they found it incredibly weird, funny or whatever, the fact that I wore this mask because every time when, I mean, they're standing in front of me and they like talking amongst one another and then they will look at me and then they'll start laughing and I just felt the energy. Mm. But the amazing thing about this whole scenario was the immense um, anger it, ev it evoked within me. I don't think I've ever been so angry like I was yesterday. Mm. And I jumped into the car and I was just going crazy and and we got home and my husband was like just calm down just be you know those people that people don't always think whatever whatever and this sort of it took me five hours to realize but these people were basically characters placed into my experience where it showed me once again that girl you need to start speaking up I mean you don't need to be disrespectful or be rude when you confront somebody. I mean, you can be respectful and you can go mm. about it in a decent way. But mm. once again, this was as with many times in my past and still I'm at that point of being mute because I'm sort of, well, what is this person gonna think? What is this person mm. gonna feel when I um, trample on their toes, for instance, or step on their toes at least? So this was just once again, a huge shadow, uh, shadow side being brought up and showing me, listen, you need to speak up. Speak up yes. when somebody, you know, you get, yeah. Yes. So. And I'm going to, I'm going to chuck something in there as well. I'm going to chuck in the first word that came up was judgment. Okay. They, they put judgment on you and think about like, how do we deal with other people's judgments? Okay. When I'm trying to speak my truth, I am in fear of people's judgments. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what does judgment mean to you? So your shadow work for this, this time is definitely going to be judgment, fear of speaking my truth. How do those two things coincide in my life? And what does it actually mean? Okay. Because when we start looking in, like, why am I scared of being judged? How is it going to make me feel? What does it bring out in me when I'm feeling judged? What does it bring out in me when I can't speak my truth? How do I feel? Like we, we're back in that scenario of being in chains, of not being free, all that type of stuff. Okay. So, so like, yeah, analyze this, babe, because this is important. Because the fact that we get that upset about something, that means a hell of a lot. And this, kind of, this is for everyone else on the call. If there's something that's triggering the shit out of you, that's a massive shadow that you have to look at, okay? Um, and the thing is, be gentle with yourself during this process, okay? Because, I mean, our own judgments of ourselves comes through the shadows, okay? And it, it gets ouchy and it's not nice and there's stuff in there and you go oh, why I thought I've dealt with this because that that always comes up I thought I've dealt with this and it's still coming back and stuff but it's like be kind to yourself okay be compassionate to yourself because in this whole thing that's happening around us now if we are being judgmental on ourselves and being harsh on ourselves that's going to show over to the rest of the world as well and one of our biggest things at the minute is that we need compassion and compassion starts here with me and then I can give it out to the world. Okay. Judgment needs to be dealt with within me. And then I will not put judgment onto other people. Okay. So Ash, I hope that makes sense. So like, I want you to just go in there and kick that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> kick that baby's <laughs> ass. You can do this. <laughs> And guys, if there's um, any, like if you have questions or whatever, like the Facebook page is there, okay? You just like chuck your questions onto the page and I will gladly like give you some direction or just like help or whatever you need. Because the thing is, we all need help at this point in time. And especially when it comes to shadow work, it's a bitch and we have to get through it. Because the minute I can see this as part of myself, it just goes, oh, that's a bit easier. I've spoken about it. It's out there, you know, it's just like, it's like I've opened up and it's so much lighter then. Okay. And also being able to share with other people. Okay. Is there anyone else who wants to put their hand up and ask a question while we are here today? Okay. I can't see everyone's faces. 
<laughs> hello, Dirian. Hello, Teresa. So many people here. Okay, cool. So no other questions today, guys, then I assume we're all good. Okay, so what I also want to do now is I just want to do a quick meditation because I've got you all in the space. So that's all good. Okay. Um, one thing, please be very aware of like your energy also, like owning your energy, making sure that um, you are literally in that space where you um, are not taking on other people's energy in your space, okay? So that fear that other people are feeling, the collective, all of that type of stuff, I think what we'll do today in our meditation is we'll just ensure that like we, we put some extra super duper protection over you um, and just really helping you to step into that space of like being contained within your energy field. Okay. Now, one other thing I'm going to say, and it's all good and well, we're doing all this work. So before I start the meditation um, is that there's a lot of things happening around us in the world and what are you doing and how are you contributing to helping? Okay. What are you doing at this point in time in your life um, to help those people around you that might be going through difficult times? And it doesn't have to be anything major. Like it could be a phone call to your best friend to check that they're fine or whatever. But all I'm saying is that people need people right now. Okay. I'm doing things like this so that people can be okay and that they can actually just like connect with themselves and start on their journey. And can, that's my contribution to society. What are you doing? Like, are you being compassionate? Are you helping out? Are you doing this? And it doesn't have to be big things, guys. Not everyone has to be on a stage somewhere, like shouting out to the top of their lungs. But do something to feel like you're part of this. And even if it is that you meditate every day and you send out love to the world, like kick ass on that then. Like make that your mission. Every single day, connect with people and send energy, send Reiki to people, send healing to people. Do what you can in your own way. Take your gifts and give it out there to the world, okay? So my gift is that I can talk to people about stuff. I like to come up with solutions. I like to share it. That's what I do. If your gift is being able, being a healer, be out there, send healing. Like we're all learning how to work in this disconnected, connected world now, okay? Everything is connected because everything is energy. So we all have access to everyone on this planet. So make sure that you also get involved with sharing whatever your gifts are out there because that's what also is needed at this point in time, okay? So let's quickly just get into a little meditation and have some fun. <sighs> okay, so I want you to close your eyes. <sighs> and I just want you to take a couple of deep breaths in and deep breaths out. And just get into that space of floatiness. So for me at the minute, I'm loving connecting to the energy of air and floating. And it's that freedom, I think, for me that air brings. It's that if you can imagine yourself like a bird, just being able to drift away completely detaching from anything that's holding you back, any of your fears, anything out there that's a shackle, anything out there that's tying you down at this point in time. Teresia Lara no Shoro Kundo, Himiaka, Helia Seki, Vatindi, Aia So Koroshe, Elia Makaradi, Dandoko, Iate. And feeling yourself now as this weightless being, and just allowing yourself to really breathe in, connecting with your lungs. Thanking your body for keeping you in good health. Sending so much love to all your cells. Every single day working. Send love to your heart that beats 
Send love to the blood that flows through your veins. Send love to that beautiful energetic system within your being that makes everything work. You don't even have to think about it. Just send love to that today. Let's extend gratitude to our physical bodies for carrying us through this time. For dealing with the anxiety, the adrenals, all of those hectic messages from our brains into our physical bodies. And we just send love and beautiful healing energy, like a beautiful soft balm, just to run over that. Just love it right now. And just realizing that all we have is here and now. I have this time, I have this now. How much can I connect with myself right now? How much can I love myself right now? That's so important right now, just now. Guru Shanda Karadi Anduka, Dadi Yalara Dodonda Ki Amade Giva Se Guru Shoko. Nigore di andada yala ramado kondo hi beredi shikiri di anda karada dando ko nda yale ke shivrasi ko helateki ase traya wakanda hi yala rakando ko danda kamba de ki adada kanda hode harado ko dadi adanda kada di adanda kara wakari adanda ka. And just extending your awareness now out to your energetic field. And just seeing those edges, the outside of this field, how these wands just thicken. And just allowing yourself to know that unless you invite that energy in there, can't penetrate, you can't keep it there, knowing that you are sovereign, that you are in charge, that you own your energy, that it is your responsibility to manage it, to nourish it, to love it, to look after it. And every day, just be aware, Connect with your feelings. What am I feeling today? And just be aware. Just always be aware. Awareness is key. Gurusha ki alarama seko heviate kiata. And any fear and anxiety that you are housing in your heart space right now. And just sending love to that. And we're asking that to present itself to us. To show us what we need to learn. To show us how we need to be compassionate towards ourselves as well. And I'm asking that now to come up into your field of awareness. That fear that sits in your heart right now. And every day from now on, when you're going to connect with that shadow side, tap into your heart, ask your heart to show you what you need to see today. Ask your heart to show you what you need to heal today, what you need to love today, what you need to accept today. Always ask. Tora shin da hialeki mate koro severa sikia sataya to dondaka erea shekero siala shimba te akaya te urisikia te and knowing that you are so supported, you are so connected, you are so loved. And I'm going to ask that all of us collectively again today take this beautiful light within our hearts and we extend that out to every single human being on earth. 
It's in love and healing, acceptance and peace. And the wish that everyone connects deeper with themselves during this period, that they connect on a deep level of love and acceptance for themselves. And we're sending peace out to people. This is what we all need right now. We just share that with everyone today. Koroshe Tayama Ndaya Dandayo Ndai Kayanda Nonia Noi Nam Onia Eserekia Dandaya Laranadiki Ande Ogo yate in da sevati. And breathing in and breathing out again. And just filling your heart now with gratitude for everything that you have right now, for this time, for the love that you carry within yourself. And just going forth in this day, knowing that everything is exactly as it needs to be right now. And that our guides are giving us this beautiful opportunity to use our 5D perspective, this higher perspective that we carry within us, this wisdom and this knowledge that we carry within us to heal ourselves, to support ourselves, to really be in that space of being aware of that every day. A connectedness that you have to your higher self, amplifying that right now. Putting a massive light on that right now. Allowing that to integrate. That strength that you carry within you, that resilience, that creativity, we bless all of that and we allow that to come through right now. We allow you to connect with those unseen parts of you right now, those beautiful parts of you right now. Te soraki la mia seku hiate. And now visualize yourself connecting to Mother Earth, a beautiful energy that she brings up through your feet, anchoring your heart to her. We thank her for all the love and allowing her to experience a profound healing for herself right now as well. Gratitude for Mother Earth, gratitude for her. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out and allow yourself now to reconnect with your body and when you are ready, you can open up your eyes again. Okay. Fabulous. Sure. Okay, peoples. So um, I will be emailing out the sheet for you guys so you can download that print it out keep it next to your bed um i will uh, also share the link for that youtube video but on the sulfagio music you can like anytime oh thank you uh okay <laughs> i'll answer that question now so um hold on let me just get my train of thought now i'm just seeing the chats here on the side like i can't multitask damn it <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys the links, but on YouTube, if you if you Google Solfejo three nine six, um, then you'll get loads of stuff there. There's like some that's like three hours long, so you could literally have this stuff like buzzing in your house, so that you can get your tune and yourself like your frequencies all sorted out. Um, and then um, yeah, so like all of that, just download it. If you have questions, guys, you pop it onto the group um onto my facebook page that's perfect if you want to ask me some more personal questions you're welcome to um email me um once i send out the email replays and stuff today you'll 
be able to just like connect with me there. You've got me on Facebook. You can message me there. If you need to book a session with me, I am working through this time. I'm not going anywhere because I can't travel anyway. So I'll be here. <laughs> so if you want to schedule a shadow session, you want some guidance, whatever, all of that's available to you as well. So just take care of yourself at this point in time and know that this is, this is happening for all of us for a very, very good reason, okay? So just allow yourself to be in this time and really understand it and experience it and, and take the opportunity to love yourself through this. Um, and then CJ, you, you were asking about the language from the meditation. Um, I speak light language, so I channel different energies, um, different soul languages, different beings of light that I connect with, and um, we use that um, as part of healing. So that's sort of like, it's my, it's my interpretation of the energies of the universe that we send out. Um, and yeah, then it works on a really deep level. Um, oh, thanks, Stefani, saying peace and love to all during this time of isolation. Isolation, treasure this unique gift. Oh, thanks, guys. You are so awesome. Love you all very much. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. Um, and yeah, just like love yourselves and like put a big smile on every morning when you wake up, smile first thing, then remember to breathe. I love you all very much. And, um, yeah. And if you need any help or whatever, you know where to find me. I am, I am there <laughs> in this ether space. Okay. Um, and it's a cycle and we go through cycles all the time. So just remember that. Okay. So lots of love and blessings and have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Um, and if you have sunshine at home, enjoy it. Um, and yeah, get out fresh air. It's good for you. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. Okay.